<laughs> well, I love this first two episodes of the season so far are just super intriguing and you obviously don't know who did it. <laughs> the view audience obviously can nowhere even tell where this is going to go. Was there something about Teddy that truly intrigued you to be a part of the series or was it the incredible co-stars you have? Uh, or what is it? The whole but shebang maybe. Oh my gosh. Okay. So for me, it always starts with the amazing script. So I love it when it's actually the entire project is great because, you know, even if you have an incredible character inside a project that's not, that doesn't rise up to the character, it's not, it's not as fun as to be in something that is surprising and twisty. And then to also have a great character. I love the fact that Teddy was a um, British woman who happened to be Chinese and spoke with a British accent. Like I remember it said she had like an eaten, eaten crust accent. And I'm like, this is fabulous. But then she also got to speak Chinese. I actually at first um, thought that maybe one of the writers was Chinese. Cause I was like, I haven't seen a single project cross my desk that had this many Asian and Chinese characters, particularly that wasn't actually a Chinese Asian show. And it was like, these characters just happen to be Chinese and there's so many of them, but that has nothing to do with like the core of what the show is, you know, it's a fun murder mystery. So I thought that was incredible. Um, I've never gotten to put on a British accent on, on screen. That was really fun. I loved how she was hiding something. And during the, I think it was the callbacks, they told me what it was that she was hiding. And then I was even more, and then I was like, I really, really, really have to do this. <laughs> I mean, we start off by finding out there's a little bit of family aboard for Teddy, but it doesn't seem sort of a comfort to her, um, you know, because she teases, you know, you know what my favorite job, part of my job is? Firing people to her own sister, right? At that point. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, Teddy doesn't yeah. seem to suffer any fools at the same time. No. Family related. I <laughs> I know. I think, you know, I think it cut her a bit of slack because even though it's like the first time we see her with Winnie, you have to think like this, this is, you know, do you have any siblings? You know, so, so it's like when yes. you write your siblings and family members, you get stuck in these little twisty circles and dynamics and, you know, you're, probably shorter with your family members and your siblings than you are with anybody else. And I think at the end of the day, it's Teddy knew she was cutting her sister a break and her sister's like one of the people who she sees, she thinks from her perspective, wanders a lot and doesn't necessarily know what she's gonna do with her life. And so from her point of view, she's sticking her neck out to cut her a break and yet she's already messing up on like the first day, you know? So she's trying to really cut her in line and remind her like, do not make a fool out of me and make me regret sticking my neck out for you. Probably, you know, this is not the first time she's disappointed Teddy either. So there's probably a little bit of like a, you know, a flashback in for her to some previous traumas between the two of them. <laughs> either that or she has, you know, she knows her mother's, instilled in her this level of you know you need to have manners and poise and everything and when he's not yet lived up to that <laughs> right right um in in my mind I think you know it, mm, I don't know if I can say this of how I view Teddy uh without com coming away with something no mm, We'll, we'll just see, we'll say Teddy uh in my mind like a lot of immigrants are inspired by by certain like maybe celebrities that they see in their lives and so they've learned to they're so some of the way that they move around in the world might not necessarily come from their own family but might come from their media inspirations well she does say you know there's one thing that they have um that gets them access to everything and that's money so mm -hmm. we know that certainly um, that's a protection and also a little bit of a warning <laughs> for Winnie. Um, right, exactly. You have some incredible co-stars as we touched on um, 
and I'm eager to find out who you were excited to share scenes with. Certainly, I've loved um, seeing the behind the scenes photos that Raul has been sharing of all of you. Yeah, yeah. You gotta love it. Oh my gosh. Yes. Did you did you see our little like yes, Titanic? On? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Titanic fan, as you can tell. So we were, we were just wandering around. You no, know, that was so much fun. And obviously, you know, Mandy, it's like I have this very keen memory of when I first saw his work Princess Bride and it was just as I was developing my love for acting as well right so it was during I think it was the first musical production I ever did in high school so maybe I was like 14 or something like that and during a technical rehearsal you know there's like a technical rehearsals run for like four hours or something and everyone has to be there so they played Princess Bride backstage while the technical rehearsal was happening. And it was so good that uh, the drama teacher would be like, at one point would be yelling, the rest stage right now. Because <laughs> no, people were like missing their cues to get on stage because they were just watching, you know, Princess Bride and Mandy and stuff. So it was very cool. There's an elegance to Teddy as well. Does it take you slipping into costume and those gorgeous outfits to truly find your inner Teddy? Or is it something you have an idea of her from the page and you walk on set and you're like, okay, I'm her now? Nah, uh, so uh, part of it is who is Teddy, right? Like who who is the real Teddy? And it's going to be hard to answer this question without revealing that sort of stuff. But like, let's just say that there's, it's like, is Teddy also Teddy when she wears certain outfits, you know? Like, is that me getting into the elegance or is it Teddy getting into the elegance? Nah. <laughs> I feel like we're going to have to chat again after right, the we'll chat. series is out. <laughs> and, then, and then I can tell you like exactly what I was thinking through the, through the entire process of creating her. And like, you know, the, cause, cause also uh, what Teddy's backstory was did kind of change a little from when I signed on and when Mike and Heidi first wrote the pilot to when we, you know, beat out the rest of the, the season there, it changed a little bit, but in my mind, I picked something that reconciled what I did with her in the pilot to what her backstory kind of like changed to. So it would be one cohesive backstory. And certainly everyone has secrets on this ship. So uh, I can't ask you to reveal too much, no matter how much I ply you with coffee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I will say, I will say, you know, Teddy is very inspired by, uh, by, you know, Audrey Hepburn. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. The elegance and stuff. There has yeah. to be some beautiful, memorable moments for you filming. And maybe even if you can't spill that, maybe talk about some episodes you really want fans to keep an eye out for, please. Oh, that's so difficult. Episodes to really keep an eye out for. I think you really have to catch them all. It's like Pokemon, you know, you got to catch them all. And <laughs> <laughs> that, that was really what we tried to do in the writer's room as well, because I have like a little... Um, I had like two big pet peeves about murder mysteries coming in and that's one not playing fair with the audience right I feel like you really need to give the audience enough clues so that they actually could guess it logically and for the for the reveals to be logical enough that it's not so out of the blue that nobody would ever guess them like you know I won't tell you the murderer but I will say you've definitely met them in the two episodes that are out now um we're playing very fair with the audience but having said that it is still very very twisty to the point where if you just skipped in the middle if you skipped all the episodes in between and then just watched the ending you would know who did it but you would be like confused as to how it all went down you know like so you really do need to watch all the episodes in between to get the details and the little reveals and you'll learn so much more about our characters um that way and then at the end, it should feel like this incredibly satisfying scratch of like an itch. <laughs> and I can't wait for everyone to see the ending. That's perfectly well said because I'm binging the series and I'm like, okay, we've got two episodes now. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I have to wait for a whole other week to get more of this and more puzzle piece, piece after piece. It's I feel like it's, it's definitely going to be a satisfying reveal. So I'm excited for us to continue to watch the rest of the season as it plays out. Um, mm -hmm. 
you've done an exceptional job, I think, at really captivating the audience, as you said, and, and really giving them little um, breadcrumbs to find oh. themselves along the way. And um, I have to ask you about working with Violet Bean, because so far, she's just, you can't look away from her, right? even with the puzzle that's laid out in front of her. But, you know, she's just, the presence she has on screen in the series is just outstanding incredible and she's so wonderful and as a person she is that charismatic you know she's wonderfully charismatic she's commanding um not only is she a lot of fun but she's got this like spunky punky attitude to her already and she directs also so actually like she directed me in a music video recently and it's just that's that's why her presence I think anyway that that charisma and the uh leadership ability is right there and it really comes off when she's directing as well and we all know you know with shows it really the culture that flows from the top and it's just great that she's there she's setting the tone of us all being wonderful friends and of us like having a great time doing it there's intensity there's intrigue there's captivating scene after scene work for this series is that what you think it's going to make death and other details such a fast fan favorite mystery series oh yes yes I hope so I mean you know honestly at the end of the day it's also like all praise goes to Mike and Heidi because even though I was like a small part in the writer's room I was like the lowest level staff writer Mike and Heidi knew what it was the big strokes and knew the big reveal of who the murder like who the murderer is and all of that stuff at the very beginning so when we all signed on they knew what was happening all we had to do was help them like figure out the little details like here and there and flesh out some things here and there but it's really their genius at the end of the day they're the ones who you know picked everyone and hired everyone and made sure they all worked together um so really it's that. And I love the little small moments, like you said, like with Violet. My personally, one of my favorite scenes in the pilot is when um, Imogen meets Jules for the first time. And I just, I love the line, but I can't call it a night. It wouldn't be fair to the dress. And I feel like the, the, watching her as this like strong woman pick up this guy is just so satisfying for me. I don't know. Um, I don't know why, but there's that and you see her do that. But then you also see that most vulnerable scene with, um, with uh, Rufus, you know, when she finally gets to the core of why she's so angry with him and she addresses him with that and just like the vulnerability Violet's able to show at the same time with the strength is just 